What's your message to the leaders of those countries about Chinese electric vehicles dominating the market? I think I would not say it's dominating the market. I would say just to bring more diversity to the local customer. In the automotive world, China has taken everyone by surprise with its new electric vehicle engine. Although this project has been years in the making, the scale and impact of this innovation have caught the entire EV industry off guard. Chinese manufacturers are revealing nearly a dozen new cars at the show. They say that the proposed EU tariffs on electric vehicles are simply unfair. For an engine that predominates its time, China's new EV engine promises not just to reshape the automotive landscape with a greener approach. Still, it is bound to destroy the competitive footing of many major players in the industry. A trade war is brewing over cheap Chinese electric vehicles as they have appended the global car industry. How did China climb so high in the automotive hierarchy, and what exactly is this revolutionary engine? Join us as we reveal the engine that could redefine the EV industry as we know it. The disruption of the hierarchy in the EV industry by China is significant. When we consider the automotive hierarchy, there are a few countries that have always been at the top of the food chain. This includes countries like Germany, Japan, and the United States. It was only around the early 21st century that we started to hear about countries like South Korea and China and their subtle moves in the electric vehicle industry. For a bunch of countries that were supposed to be the new players in the automotive industry, it appears as though they have what it takes to be the pace setter at a global level. Considering the new players, China seems to be the most daunting of them all. Apparently, with their new engine, they seem to have made a really substantial proclamation that they are taking over the game completely. Thanks to their new product, other countries aren't just looking at China as a possible global exporter of anything regarding automotive parts. European Union countries have agreed to impose new tariffs of up to 35% on electric cars from China. That's on top of the existing 10% duties. But news has it that in the coming years, they might give Germany a run for their money, especially regarding the electric vehicle industry. Is that too much of a daring thing to say? Perhaps not, considering the extensive efforts China has made to get to this point. Talking about the efforts of China to bring the initiative of EVs into the country, there are a few people who look to a certain individual, Wan Gong, as the one who spearheaded China's electric vehicle movement. Apparently, Wan, who is known as the father of China's EV revolution, was a former engineer and academic who studied automotive engineering in Germany. It was there that he gained crucial insights into EV technology, which he later brought back to China to shape the nation's ambitious plans for clean energy. So, typically, his vision and leadership set the stage for the booming EV industry that's now making headlines around the world. That much is true. We're turning to the car industry now because the US and Europe have been going after China recently for unfairly propping up its electric car industry. However, while all of that is true, we can't simply give him all the accolades considering how impressive the project itself is. That being said, it's safe to say that the concept of electric vehicles in China wasn't the brainchild of a single individual but rather grew from a collective push driven by government policymakers, industry leaders, and engineers. China came along and thrust the future upon us, and now it's achieved this with breakneck growth in the industry fueled by government subsidies. In truth, for China, the EV initiative all started as an experiment by the government toward green energy, but now their domination in that market is causing tension with the West amidst fears it'll become too reliant on cheaper Chinese green solutions. However, we can clearly see what the result is like in present times. Right from the year 2023, China became responsible for 58% of global electric vehicle production, with an astonishing 9 million passenger EVs sold within and abroad. Considering how many of those vehicles are now being owned by commuters, the atmosphere in China can almost be likened to a haven, one which is almost free from air pollution. Now, how's that for advancement? As regards EVs, it all boiled down to the impact of fossil fuels on both the environment and the economy. China, which had noticed that it was becoming way too reliant on imported oil, had long looked for a way out. And being that EVs were one of those ways to curb the importation of oil, they were willing to give everything they had. As such, they were willing to pour resources into EV research and development, offering generous subsidies to companies willing to make the switch to electric. But that was just the beginning. Eventually, China introduced quotas requiring automakers to sell a minimum percentage of EVs, essentially mandating the industry to align with the national goal of electrification. At the moment, you can pretty much say that automakers are a little on the edge because of this. Apparently, 
what the quota by the government does is that it speeds up the production of electric vehicles in the country and puts producers at risk of losing their share if they slack to meet the quota. As demanding a request as that might be from the government, the country seems to be reaping the fruits of its efforts in many ways already, as it has led to the rise of more companies in the country. One such company is Build Your Dreams, popularly known as BYD, since the inception of this company. In 1995, the company had always dealt with the production of batteries. It was when the EV market started to boom that they began to produce batteries needed for electric vehicles, and today they have joined other companies around the world in cashing out big time. One of the top businessmen who was able to foresee the company's growth and trajectory is Warren Buffett. You were the one, though, who convinced Warren to buy an electric car company in China, BYD, which is now here we are a year later after first discussing this. Being highly impressed by the vision of the company, he invested his money in 2008. Now imagine how much he must have gotten in return. Guess they don't call him a top businessman for nothing. With all considered, BYD isn't the only company that seems to be reaping the benefits of the evolution and success of Chinese EVs. There are others like NEO, which focuses on high-tech luxury EVs, and Xpeng, which adopts autonomous driving features. Looking at how far these companies have come, it is safe to say that they are no longer just making EVs. They are taking innovation to a whole new level, making cars that are stylish, affordable, and highly packed with the latest tech features. At the moment, it's safe to say that comparing China's adoption of EVs to those of other countries is completely illogical, and this is for many reasons. On record, we know that in 2022, the country sold over 6.8 million electric vehicles, accounting for more than half of the global EV sales that year. With annual sales of electric vehicles already above 30% of all cars in China, the mood there remains optimistic. By the following year, one-third of all cars sold in China were electric. China is responsible for more than half of all new EV sales around the world, a figure that couldn't be compared to that of any other country. Still not convinced? What if we tell you that China has more charging stations than any other country in the world? As a matter of fact, the number of charging stations exceeds a million, with the United States having just one-tenth of that. In some Chinese cities, it's now more common to see a charging station than a gas station. Welcome to Shenzhen, home to the biggest charging square not only in China but also in the whole world. If you are looking for an EV heaven on earth, China is definitely your place to go with their electric ambitions showing no signs of slowing down. By 2035, China is bound to be at the forefront, with no country being able to stand against them in the EV industry. If you have been following the trend of electric vehicles, China's current position in the industry would definitely come as a shock. No doubt, with that much accounted for, a couple of questions are expected. For instance, how did China come to have the upper hand in the electric vehicle industry? So you see, while importers of the batteries might pay a fortune just to get the batteries they need to build their EVs, company name doesn't use the expensive raw materials. There's no cobalt, no copper, no lithium, and no graphite, which are all primarily controlled by China today. This, right here, is where China has the advantage as a country.